afternoon. I'm Jim Foster, director of the City Club, and welcome to this special program. Today, we are most honored to have a special forum with a very special speaker, Rajman Gandhi. Professor Gandhi is the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi, and he has authored a book about his grandfather entitled Gandhi, The Man, His People, and the Empire. Dr. Gandhi is a distinguished professor who has authored several other books and has also served in the Indian Parliament and led the Indian delegation to the U.S. Civil Rights Commission in 1990. But I would like to ask a very special person in the world of the City Club to come to the podium to give us some insight as to why this forum is so important to us. So I would like to welcome uh, Reverend Dr. Otis Moss, who is a, a member of the City Club Hall of Fame and who has spoken here and is a distinguished religious leader in our community to come up and offer a special insight into this program. Reverend Moss. Thank you very much. Our friend Jim and to our special guest, Mr. Gandhi, it is a great moment, a great place, and a great person united this afternoon. It is a great moment, 2008, 60 years after the assassination of Mahatma Gandhi, 40 years after the assassination of Martin Luther King, Jr. But in each life, we have found something permanent, something great, yea, something immortal. It was my good fortune to have the privilege of communicating with two individuals who had the privilege of meeting and conversing with Mahatma Gandhi in, per in person. The late Dr. Howard Thurman who writes extensively about his meeting with Mahatma Gandhi and his experiences when Dr. Thurman and Mrs. Thurman shared an extensive trip to India. And when he returned to his teaching post at Howard University, he recommended two specific things. One, that President Mordecai Johnson would visit India uh, and seek an audience with Mahatma Gandhi. And he also shared his experience with the dean of the School of Religion, now Howard Divinity School, at that time, who was Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays, who subsequently became president of Morehouse College, the alma mater of Martin Luther King, Jr., and also my alma mater. It was through these individuals that Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. became acquainted in a very special way with the life and work of Martin Luther King, of uh, Mahatma Gandhi, and impacted the life and work of Martin Luther King, Jr. It is an amazing story, and I would encourage everyone to read it in Dr. King's chapter of two of his books, My Pilgrimage to Nonviolence. And 
Dr. Thurman, in his autobiography, With Head and Heart, devotes a chapter to his experience with Gandhi, and so does Dr. Mays in his autobiography, Born to Rebel. And it is amazing to note that here such an individual impacted in his own life human rights in South Africa, independence in India, and the civil rights, human rights movement in America. And we are privileged today to hear from, to learn from, the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi in our midst and among us today. And I want to join the City Club in welcoming Professor Gandhi and also take advantage of this moment to say that he will be worshiping with us this coming Sunday at the Olivet Institutional Baptist Church. So I will have two opportunities to say, welcome to Cleveland. We thank you and appreciate your life and work and all that you represent. It's a terrible thing to stand between a wonderful introducer and the audience. <laughs> uh, we should have had you speak for half an hour more. Thank you, sir, for those wonderful, wonderful words. And may I say, uh, Director Jim Foster and all of you uh, who've joined us this afternoon, may I say to all of you how excited my wife and I are to be in this great city of Cleveland for the first time a city that seems to be so conscious of the world and all its people. I'm also very proud of the fact that many who have come from India to Cleveland, have made Cleveland their home, have allowed Cleveland to capture their hearts. And in the last couple of days, uh, the good people who have invited me here, Joe Thomas, who is here, uh, and Raj Pillay, and Vijaya Imami, uh, among others, but these three spent several hours with us yesterday, uh, and Usha and I were able to discover from them uh, of their tremendous involvement uh, with the life of Cleveland, the history of Cleveland. So I, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, uh, Cleveland is able just to capture people like that. And, and that is, of course, true for so many other parts of the world. And I must say what about the India Culture Garden, which is just a terrific place, not just a center for India, Indian culture, which seems to be almost a magnet for peace and partnership in this area. So I'm very thrilled about that. Of course, I'm aware that Ohio decides uh, the presidency of the United States. Uh, but for that, for my comments and views on that, perhaps you'll have to invite me another time. But I'm here primarily to talk about my book, not just about Gandhi, but about my book. Um, what is new about it? Well, there is some brand new material in it, which is a bit unusual so after so many decades have passed. Uh, it's also a complete story of the man from the beginning to the end. You know, many of the wonderful biographies that came uh, after he was killed in 48 uh, inevitably tended to focus on the final years of, of his life. Uh, but this book does start the story conventionally at the beginning and takes you forward and brings it to the close. It also uh, brings to life the human Gandhi. Uh, yes, he was a terrific political figure, he was a spiritual figure, but he was a father, a husband. Uh, and he had relationships, uh, and these were sometimes uh, rich and sometimes difficult relationships. So those also are brought out here. Uh, and I should also point out uh, that the Indian History Congress Every two years gives an award for a work of history, and they gave this book its latest award. 